Katie, Bobby, welcome to the show. So glad to have you on to share your journey. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. doing us. that. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah. So can you just start us out by sharing a little bit about you and who you guys are and what you do right now before we dive into how this all came to be? Well, we could introduce ourselves like we do on our podcast, right? Yeah, so, so he's the... I'm the convert Catholic and she's the... The cradle Catholic. And uh, we have been married for 13 years. And, you know, it was his conversion that sparked me to actually take my faith seriously. But in that, I've been a teacher and educator for uh, over a 12, 12 years, and I'm now in my third year as a principal of a Catholic school. So um, never thought I'd be doing that at all. You know, and I, I taught theology beforehand, but before that, I was just a, a public school teacher, right? And it just took me on a different path with, with his conversion. So Yeah, so my conversion was about 16 years ago, but I was, I say I'm a convert, but I was basically a pagan. So I was baptized as a baby, but I had no formal religion or catechism or any of that kind of stuff. So I had a radical conversion. I was a, a wayward soul and living a totally different lifestyle from you know the frat boy to the bar fighter to you know, like, you know, just doing doing whatever felt good was my 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 motto. And just you know, that was how I lived my life. And started dating Katie and she invited me to one mass. So I went to my first mass. It was a midnight mass at Christmas, like 16 years ago. And at that point in my life, I had everything was fell apart. So that lifestyle that I was living came tumbling down. Eventually I held it together for years and I thought it was invincible. So it all came crashing, lost my job and lost my house. I lost my hair. You, you name it. It was like, all these things were going bad. So I was at that point in my life where I was, I knew I got myself in these problems and this trouble and I couldn't fix it myself. So it was just the right time where she just, she never was like, well, you got to go to church to date me or anything like that. But she just, no, just I was just a, a cradle invitation. Catholic that had to do the things not take it seriously. Like, but it's just, I lived under my mother's roof. I had to do the things. Right. So it was like, Hey, uh, you know, uh, it's midnight mass and uh, that's our tradition in our family, right? To go to midnight mass. Like if you want to come with me, no big deal. That's all it was. And then he's like, well, I want to go every Sunday. I'm like, what? Yeah. Oh, wow. So, so I didn't I, even take this seriously, but okay. At, at the time I didn't know what it was, how, how to explain it. But obviously knowing now that I was overcome by the Holy spirit because I was just open and vulnerable to like, Hey God, if this is, this is real, I'm open to it. You know, let me know. Wow. And it was just an overwhelming feeling of, peace and love and you know for the first time i felt like truly like loved in a different way for for me not for you know what i could do or what i did or what i didn't do but for me so i felt that like overwhelmingly so and the church is beautiful and it's like the mute it's just such a beautiful church it was just like everything was at the right time it was at the right mm -hmm. place at the right time in god's house and i walked out of there literally a different person like a crazy, like I, like I told her, I said, I think I want to do this every Sunday. Like, what was that? And he used to make fun of me for going to oh, church. Oh yeah. So it was, it was a radical. I, started dating. I really don't know why I was dating you. Yeah. No, I was, <laughs> I was a quintessential yeah, wait, bad yeah, boy. I have so many questions. We need to, we need to slow you, down and go yeah, back. Her original question was, tell me a little bit about yourself now, <laughs> oh, now? before we go deep. And I, skim the surface and you went right for the jugular so yeah. you know i'm like wait a minute whoa, whoa. okay he's going for it all that's insane that tell is me your life story go wow. yeah so i mean it's the quintessential bad boy i mean that was me i was you know i was a jock and a stoner and i went to college i did the frat boy thing and i did that hard i mean i was like van wilder times 10 in college that was me i was that the party guy so it was just hedonism basically that's just how i live my life i grew up i have three brothers and you know one was two were cops one was an mma fighter and one was in prison so like we were like rough and tough and that's just how we, we you know how we got down i just didn't have any formal training i thought it was a you know doing you know it was good i was a good kid i wasn't stealing or you know i had i still had a, a, a code i guess you know but but that eventually always comes crashing down on you. I mean, you can always you can only hold those spinning plates for so long before one of them falls and then they all come tumbling down. So it's just crazy that how a power of 
a simple invitation yes. that I didn't even take my own faith seriously, you know. But she also she wasn't taking it seriously, but she was still different than any other else that I knew because no one else was going to church and how she carried mm. herself and how she interacted. You know, we did meet in a bar and stuff like that, but it, she was, you could tell there was something different and that sparked a curiosity other than being beautiful and all those other things. Oh, she, she was, you know, well, for example, like I was dating a girl and an ex and the way that she handled my ex was like, like the, the normal girl would like took a drink. I would have thought and, like threw it in her face. And she's like, no, the girl was so drunk. She ended up driving her home. I'm like, wait, 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 how does that happen? How can a person do that? <laughs> like, I've never seen that like radical, like loving somebody that you shouldn't like, I, mm. I saw it firsthand and I was like, what is that? Like, I didn't even comp I couldn't even comprehend that that was possible or an option. Like my, my reaction is really, Oh yeah, I'm going to get back at you or I'm going to do something. So that's just how, you know, that was my world, my worldview. So it was, it was attractive in that way. But then, like I said, through the power of an invitation and the Holy spirit doing all the work. I mean, that's the only, that's the only explanation. Like today, if I would have looking back like 20 years ago, like this would be the, I would have bet you a million dollars. This would <laughs> never would happen. Like you couldn't imagine it. So now it's like, wow. But the, the beautiful thing is, is, you know, it's like those, I was really passionate the one way. So it's just like, it's easier. Once you turn a boat, tell? it's hard to turn a, a, you know, a boat that stopped, but one that's going this way, once you turn it and direct it the other way, then it, it's the same, you know, I'm a hundred percent kind of a person. I'm kind of, type a or whatever obsessive and so it's, it's like like saint paul it reminds me of I, his I don't conversion. Put, um that's what i feel like at times because it's like there's no other way to explain it it was like a, a damascus moment like th that was it i'm not to, on he calls level. It a divine invasion yeah that was yeah that's insane i feel like sometimes when we're so far it is that powerful when we do encounter him because it's real. And you're like, does anybody else know this is real? And then you have to just tell everybody because and, it's so yes. apparent to you. I think that that can happen. Absolutely. When you're so far one way and then you encounter Christ, it's like you go so far the other way because you want everyone to know that this is actually real. And then the people that are lukewarm going to mass, those you know, people are special. Like, Wait a minute. Right. Well, so, that's why I, I look at that blessed are the poor in spirit so differently, you know, knowing his story when that, that, you know, when you've hit rock bottom and when you know what it's like to be completely without God and you encounter God, you know, it did make me as someone who was brought up in it, some things I had to do, you know, extreme eye roll. My mom made me do all these things. Right. Um, to see it, so it, the things that I was forced to do my whole life um, impact a person in a way that it didn't impact me, then it made me reflect like on so many things I was taking advantage of and I was that lukewarm, that lukewarm person, that box checker, right? Well, I have to do the things. Not saying I didn't have a relationship with God or take my face seriously, but it wasn't mine. It was my my mom's, right? It was my my thing I had to do. So watching someone else be impacted and, and encounter God in that way. It, it made me more open to that and start to take it more seriously and start to think of it in as my own personal faith and not something I just had to do. So then did you end up having kind of your own personal encounter with the Lord at some point after that? I would say mine was more slow. His was like this jolt, right? And it was still an ongoing conversion, I think, for both of us. Is right. He got more into, again, as you can tell, he's kind of a hit the ground running person. And so it's, Hey, I read this book. Hey, I looked this up. I'm listening to this. I'm watching this. I'm doing this. Did you hear this? I'm like, I don't know anything you're talking about. I just go to church on Sundays. What are you doing? You know? Well, so, I, well, I think that he joined it, RCIA and I yes. became his sponsor. And once he started going to the classes and finding out things and some things I knew and some things I didn't, we kind of discovered things or I rediscovered things with yeah. him and we discovered other things together. We started listening to more things and, and I don't know, I think it just became our journey then together. And I, for me, it was more slow, but then there were, there were moments, moments yes. that I would say were complete encounters that were life-changing. Yeah. We got invited to the first amazing parish conference in Denver in 2014. I think it was our parish priest. We were only married a few years or four years. Yeah. 
we were married in 2010, we were married about four years and our parish priest, he was a heavy uh, Polish accent. So he was asking us to go to this amazing parish conference, but we thought we were going to be something for a marriage ministry in the parish. We had no idea what we were even going to. We just were like, Ooh, we'll go to, we'll go to Colorado. Sure. You know? And, um, we went to that and focus put on in such an amazing, uh, night with, uh, music with Matt Marr and adoration that ended in confession. Like a, like how, a, I don't know, have you ever been to a focus conference? They're yeah. so powerful. Well, that not, whole, you know, yeah, they do that whole yeah. evening with the, with music yes. and then, uh, adoration. And then everybody walks into confession. They did a mini one of those at the, at the amazing, uh, parish conference. And that was a total a divine invasion for me that, that adoration and music and confession was very healing for me. And then I had other little mini ones and confessions and things like that, but that I'd say was the big one for me. And then obviously another one for him to catapult him continue, you know, to, to continue. Yeah, I, I think it's a lot more, I mean, being surrounded because, you know, and a lot of times like there's so many lukewarm people in the parish and I'm new to this. So I'm like, I'm like, all right, I'm reading the Bible. I'm like, all right, what, when do we start doing the stuff? Like, just want to I want to go do this stuff. I don't want to like heal people and stuff like that, but I want to go like serve the poor. I want to like, what are we doing? Like I get coming to mass, but like, all right, now let's go. And, and they're like, like no, they're like, no, let's have a meeting about it. Let's do this. Go. And I'm like, like whoa, 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 no, 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 no. So, <laughs> so we're at, we're at this amazing Paris. And then I start hearing about this disciple stuff. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. make disciples. What's that? Wait, 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 there's a whole nother part to this, like disciples. And then Jeff Cavins gives a talk and all these people are giving all these talks about making disciples. I'm like, all right, we got to get into the disciple making business because this is something I'm like, I was, I was sold. Like the talk was, are you a fan or a follower? Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I was just a fan. I'm like, I'm going to be a follower. And I was like, sold. So like, I'm like, when we get back, we're going all heads out for well, all these things. On. They did an alpha presentation on the alpha program and yeah. it was father Malin and, uh, they explained alpha and the whole time he's like, well, what's this alpha? What's this alpha? What, what's alpha? I need to know more about alpha. So then it was, it was that looking at that as the catalyst or that, that disciple helper, right? Like to reach that outreach, that, that basics of, of Christianity that we could see our own parish needing. Yeah. And then that, that uh, easy way of outreach to our, to the community that we lived in at the time, we're not in that community anymore. We moved, but at the time, and it was a, an older parish and an older community. And it was just kind of a different shift of thinking that we were kind of always met with a lot of resistance, but Bob took on the, he just went and got trained in alpha, even though the parish was parish priest was like, well, I don't know. We'll see. He's like, oh, no, I'm going to go to the training next week. It's in Michigan. So, <laughs> we're in, we were so in Illinois. <laughs> I just took off. I'm like, I'm, I'm not asking for permission. I'm like, you know, I, if you're not going to give me, we're, I'm, I'm getting trained to try to help the people because everyone's 70 plus, like if we don't do something and plus this is all in the middle of consolidations and there's three churches in our town and I'm like, our church isn't closing. So I was taking it personal. I'm mm -hmm. like, so, but like, we have to do something different. I'm like, yes, you know, we're praying the rosary. We're doing the sacraments. We're doing all this stuff, but like, we got to get new people. Like what's going on here? Like, and there's no other, like no one knows how to evangelize. So this, this was like a evangelization for relevant for, I mean, yeah. like you said, you know, how do you invite people our age to things if we're not making it accessible and relevant when you're saying like, Oh, this changed me. I want to tell the world. I want to tell the world we do. We have circles of friends that still don't practice their faith. Or I have a lot of, like, I'm probably myself and my best friend are the only two people I know that really truly practice their faith at all anymore out of all of our friend circles. So it was like, we were looking, we were eager and excited coming back, back from that conference. And then him as a convert to just be able to make our faith accessible to our friends and family members that we know needed it so bad. We saw how it impacted and changed us and made us better and made us happier and made us, you know, more fulfilled. And you can't just invite, yes, you can invite him to Miracles mass. happen at mass, happen but at that's, mass. I'm the exception. So this isn't like, yes. just get your friend to mass and all of a sudden they're going to be a, a crazy Catholic. Cause that's you know, right. it was we like a miracle chat clearly, you know? So we were yeah. looking for some kind of a, a tool to help us invite people to things, you know? Mm -hmm. I want to say thank you to today's episode sponsor, Thomas and Arts. Thomas and Arts is an amazing family owned and run 
art business, small business that is creating original art and affordable reproductions for contemporary beauty to flourish in community and culture. It's just this beautiful family raising five boys in Colorado that has felt inspired and called by God to produce and create original artwork that shares the saints, the Holy Family, and other beautiful artwork in a contemporary and creative way and culture while um, they're at it. So go check out some of their beautiful prints and artwork at thomasonarts.com. That's T-H-O-M-A-S-O-N arts.com. You can use code to grow good at checkout for 10% off your order. Use code to grow good, all one word, at thomasonarts.com for 10% off your order. That's the things, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I'm trying to understand, Bobby, just like what happened. <laughs> so you I'm still so, try to figure it out. Yeah. I mean, so you went to mass and you just had literally just during mass, you just felt flooded with love and peace. Yes. And you were overwhelmed by this feeling. I mean, it was just a presence that yeah. kind of overcame you to the point where you were it was undeniable that this was real. Yes. I mean, did you know, though, did you connect it to like the Eucharist or yeah. like, yes, did you well, know what was going like, on? He was baptized, was only baptized. I'm the only one in my family who were baptized. So he didn't receive the Eucharist or anything. No, I did. No. So, so that's the backstory. So I went to one, I played football at a Catholic school. Was in, but not that I was okay. in six, I was in sixth grade and I went to, I went to one mass, like half of it. And I went to one CCD class just, just to play football. They're like, you just got to go to one class, go to church one time. And I took wow. the Eucharist and I didn't even know what it was. So Nobody that when I that. saw that in mass, I'm like, oh no, I knew that was God. I wow. knew. So of all the bad things that I had done in my life, which were many, that was the number one thing that I wanted. The first thing I confessed and talked about. That's how when serious it was. First That's when, when I first, my very RCA. first confession, when I went to RCIA before I was got all the sacraments, that was the biggest thing weighing on my soul because I knew it immediately. So it was at the midnight mass where you connected. Extraordinary. That is God. Some, an extraordinary sense of faith. Yeah. I don't know. It was just a gift. Wow. And, it's like an infusion of knowledge. I think they call it yeah. right. Like where you just know. Yeah. That's incredible. So, so that's what drove everything from the amazing parish. Like there was the first time we had, I had like serious Eucharistic adoration. It was like, Honestly, that was as, as a practicing Catholic my whole life, we, we would see adoration, but that was the first time that I really saw the impact of an, of an adoration. Well, I mean, especially it was because it was a thousand people worse. Like we never seen like so many people on fire for faith in one place. Mm -hmm. And it was like, everybody's crying. And it's like, it's like, in, it was just like insane. And then it ended with a beautiful confession, but that is what I knew from the beginning like the that that impact. was, that that was, that was real. Mm -hmm. And so then wow. I've been nonstop studying and researching. And now it eventually led to me the last three years. I've been going to daily mass. Like that's how intense that it got. It's like I go every day. Like I can't, yeah. the days I don't go, I could feel the, the draw and the, the, the grace that I need. Cause when I don't, because yes. like I said, I have half my life. I was, uh, you know, I still have a lot of ingrained bad behaviors. I'm still sinful. I still, you know, but I, when I, when I go to Matt, when I do go to Matt, it's like, okay, it's like a, it's like a force field. It's like a shield <laughs> yeah. from sin. And it just really is. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, that's how I first started was that I'm like, this is not enough. Once, you know, once an hour a week out of the 168, it's not enough. I have too many bad habits, too many bad patterns. I need more Jesus. And the Protestants had it right where it's like on Wednesdays, they get together like, Hey, you know, halfway through the week. So I'm like, I'm right, start adding in one mass. And then that's just how it really grew. But, but I think what, what for both of us really where our faith started coming to life is once we started to serve, you know, that, the first couple of years I was learning, I didn't know so much. I was spending so much time on learning the faith and me and God, the vertical, the up and down. But once I was able to connect that to the horizontal, to also to giving of myself to others and doing through, whether that's alpha or doing anything, but alpha was just an easy, you know, I didn't have to reinvent the wheel. It's like, Hey, invite some mm -hmm. people, come have a dinner. Like people like free food. So like, hey, <laughs> hey, we got a free food. They already have the videos. And then it's just basic, you know, charisma type stuff. Like who's Jesus? Why did he die? And great conversations where it's like no judgment. And we're just going to talk about 
Jesus to you. And, you know, there's no right or wrong answers. You know, I don't correct you saying, well, actually the catechism says this. It's like, it's creating a space for people to, to, to verbalize what they believe because a lot of people don't even think about what they believe or why they believe it. Mm -hmm. And so what really started to change with us is getting involved and walking with people on that journey. And then halfway through, there's a retreat with the Holy spirit. And the first, first time we did it, like, we didn't know what was going on. Like we didn't have any helpers. It was just me and me and her. I was getting off of work, going to the grocery store, buying the food. We were making the food, preparing it. We didn't have like a team. We didn't have a budget. It was all our own money. Like we're like, we were set, like, we're going to do this thing. And then it's like the weekend away, like we set up this retreat and then it's the Holy spirit weekend. So we're like, all right, we got to pray over people, pray with people. Like, we never did that before. We never did it, but I'm like, we're just going to. Wow. We, you know, we prayed with each other and stuff like that, but it's just different. Just... <laughs> it's just, it's being vulnerable, you know, and that's not just for them, but for you and to, but the miracles that come through that, it's like, because the way that, you know, and this could, it's not just, we're not just trying to sell alpha. I'm just saying in general, whether that's just alpha is small the groups. beginning and, and that is yeah. the beginning to being able to, to allow a space for these conversations for these conversations for prayer, and for, for, for trust to get built and for people to have some vulnerability and let down their guards because people um, right. they put up their guards and and that's and that's normal and that's fine because people don't want to be you know you're not going to lead with your neck and be vulnerable you know because people have been hurt or whatever it's just weird you don't start off and just give your confessions and like i do and just tell everybody how crazy i was and whatever but most people don't do that so it's like yeah. you got to get to know them over weeks and weeks spending time with them and you walking with them so when it comes time to like to this retreat, it's like, we're seeing people like experience encounter the Lord in a real way. Like these wow. people have been going to church for 50 years and like, they've never had an encounter with Jesus and they're receiving him, but it's also the mode of the receiver. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, you can, you know, uh, I don't know if it's Matthew Kelly or somebody says like, it's like with the, the chocolate milk, you could be squirting the chocolate into the milk, but if you don't take the spoon and stir it, it's like, you're not going to have chocolate milk. You just have like milk with a little bit of chocolate at the bottom. It's like, well, right. we have that and the Holy spirit just just ignites it. And it was nothing I was doing or alpha was doing. It was just creating a space, creating the space for people to be vulnerable and to mm -hmm. call God down on that space and pray with people and to be with them, hold their hand and let them cry and let them figure that. And we started to see li people's lives be changed. And wow. it was beautiful. Again, I'm a public school teacher who then went, went in to be a Catholic school teacher. And I taught regular middle school, but something called me to do more. So I ended up teaching theology for four years, which I never thought again, never thought I'd be teaching yeah. theology, right? Because I never took my faith that seriously, but it really, yeah. And that those experiences, wow, I want to continue to, to give this as a, as a, as an educator that I want to give that to young people. Right. So I started uh, actually doing alpha with my middle schoolers when I taught um, social studies and then moved. That's how it just catapulted me into theology, which I don't know how I became a principal, but you know, it's just like so crazy how the Holy Spirit. Know, that's well, how God, know. that's the oh, thing. God takes it your, and runs with it. Yeah. He laughs at your plans. He does. Yes. He laughs at your plans because it's it's not uh, even where our at plans, all he would have, you know, asked us even 10 years ago what we thought we were going to be doing. You know, um, right. Cause you then think now we have and, a podcast and we're doing this, right. And you he know? does it in such a way where you, you think it's you doing it, but it's really him doing it. Like your invitation to mass, you know, you, you thought this is just what I have to do. So let me like bring this up casually to my boyfriend. Cause this is what I do <laughs> for Christmas. Little did you know, like it yeah. would catapult this whole journey that you guys would be on no. and now, right ministry that you have like it's just wild but god knew you know of course god knew he yeah. was setting it all up this whole time for everything to fall into place like yeah. so i just yeah. love hearing conversion stories for that reason because in hindsight you can see how the holy spirit oh, yeah. was working the whole time but we don't see it in the moment we we're just acting we just think that it's even our idea and it's like no no this is all planned you know mm -hmm. when we allow the lord to work in our lives even the tiniest bit you know even just like okay i guess i'll mention this and see if he wants to come and he'll probably say no <laughs> you yeah, know but it's like laugh at me and Holy say Spirit no i'll go home that. after your aunt's house you know like now like well you know usually with this we, we would go out to so there was a, a bar that was kitty corner from the church and me and my best friend it was our tradition that we would go and 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 have you know um a time there and then go to the christmas carols to, to listen to the christmas carols at the at the church before like 
I don't know, about an hour before mass. And then there was midnight mass. So I was like, you know, we're, we're together now. You know, this is what I do every Christmas. If you'd like to come with no big deal. I had no wow. idea what that, what would happen. Yeah. So yeah. I'm curious too, like, I guess, Bobby, in your, in your journey, did you have, I guess the Lord did it in such a way that it was at mass, but did you have doubts or did you look into other religions? Like, were you wondering what about all these other forms of Christianity even, or like, I don't know, what was your journey like intellectually from there? Did you, yeah, it sounds like you studied a lot, but yeah, I studied a lot. I I mean, it was a lot. I was, I was anti-Catholic, like, I mean, cause that's how it was presented to, to us in high school. I think my history teacher was Protestant and he just really hammered the Catholic church and I loved history. So I was just like, okay, like trans uh, trans I'm like, what is that? Like, that's impossible. And then there was a guy that was Catholic and he hung out at a bar we we're at and he was like over the top, like my best friend's brother preachy. <laughs> and I'm like, get out of here, you know, but so no, it was never it was, I mean, I was, like I said, I was baptized Lutheran. I was the only one in my family he's the only, it's, I think out of my it's four, really it's me and there's four of us. That. I'm the only one that's baptized. Yeah, so that indelible mark was there. His four brother, or, you know, there's four of them, four boys of the four boys. He's the oldest. And I'm pretty sure that's because some relative at the time said, get that baby baptized. Right. Wow, Says the other yeah. three are not. But, so it's yeah, just interesting. It's the, just shows the power of uh, baptism. Jennifer Fulweiler. I don't know if, if you, if you're familiar with her she's a atheist a con- convert from atheism and yeah she she was also baptized because a relative said so but like there's something to that that grace like that's real you know that he mm-hmm. is that he was so uh you know prone to that and 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 open to those things i think that those graces from baptism are definitely what what allowed that in divine invasion to happen at the time that it happened yeah. And then, so you were anti, and then this happened at mass and then you started studying because you like, were like, and, I mean, there's no denying it, that this it, is real. Study this, would be like a, like a light word. Like I was, <laughs> I'm, I'm still obsessed. So yeah. So I ended up going to the, so then the same Polish priest was like, Hey, can you do this thing? So I looked at the sheet I'm like, okay, it's like this late leadership program. It's like, okay. I looked at the sheets like, all right, a year, like Monday night classes. I'm like, I just looked the front page. I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. So I didn't turn it over and look like, no, this is the two oh, year. Shit. It's like <laughs> Saturdays, like all day, like all the way up in like an <laughs> hour and a half from our house at the Mundelein yeah. Seminary. So I didn't even know what I was signing myself up for. So I did this program. We I just like, kept saying yes to this really awesome priest that was a good friend to us. Yeah, and so I just kept saying yes. We always know what we were saying yes to to him. He was just had this way of, we just, he knew though, I'm there sure. Weren't or the many, Holy there did. weren't that many people to help yeah. at the, that were under the age of 65, you know? So it was right. like, we felt when he would ask us to do things, we're like, sure, father, what are you yeah. sure? We'll, we'll do that. <laughs> so we didn't always know what we were saying yes to, but we would. So, yeah, I just, I just started studying and reading. I probably, I don't know, I don't know how many Catholic books I've read probably 150 probably at least and wow. nonstop listen to in my ears listening to I'm on my third year of Bible in a year I'm I caught up with catechism in the year I've read the catechism Amazing. like soon I became Catholic I read the whole catechism like like what else, how many Catholics have done that I'm like I don't care I was just obsessed because I was like I know it's true and I want to learn as much I got a lot of making up to do because yes. of, I didn't you know and it's weird because now like I said I go to daily mass but I never got a chance to altar serve so now like I get to do that a lot. It's like, it's like, it's the Super Bowl. It's like, this mm-hmm. is so cool. Like, like you know, it's cradle just like... Catholic. Well, I never was an altar server, but as a cradle Catholic would probably just think that that's just something they grew up with. Right. Something that they would take for granted. You're seeing through this convert's eyes, such mm-hmm. a different world and different experience. It is kind of, I'm sometimes jealous, you know, like the things that are so new to him. I'm like, Oh, that's, that's what we've been doing for a long time here. Like, yeah. You know? <laughs> But I, yeah, I mean, I can totally relate because I, so I grew up Catholic, but I, I have had just an incredible conversion journey I, that reminds me more of Bobby's in the sense of like, cause I drifted for years. And then once I realized that it was true, which it's a whole journey that I had, but I got so on fire. It was like, I just couldn't get enough, like spending hours in adoration, going to daily mass every day spending just time in prayer that like would go by it felt like five minutes but it would be like an hour long I was like in prayer just like crazy things like that 
But once you realize that it's true, that's really where my heart is for people that just don't get that it's true. You know, it's not just a bunch of things that you're doing, which is hard because I think there are, like you're saying, there are so many Catholics that just go through the motions Mm -hmm. and people know so many Catholics that are just going through the motions. And so they come to believe, oh, it's just a bunch of things that you do because you feel like you have to. And then it's like, or so many walk away and don't even realize. And I think that that hurts more when they walk away and don't, I just want to be like, do you know what you're walking away from? Like right. you don't, cause you never had, if you're walking away, you didn't have an encounter. You don't know the truth. You don't, you don't experience, you know, like you can't walk away from that once you've right. really experienced it. Do you love coffee with your prayer time as much as I love coffee with my prayer time? I think you do. And why not pair delicious coffee with amazing saints with Catholic coffee? If you go to catholiccoffee.com, you can take 15% off any order with code GROW at checkout. They are an amazing Catholic company that pairs roasts with different saints. And it's really fun when they come in the mail. They even have little tidbits about each saint. And you can use it as an evangelization opportunity, as a gift, or to share it with your family and to learn more about our Catholic faith. Go to catholiccoffee.com and use code GROW at checkout for 15% off. You can't walk away from that once you've right. really experienced it. And I think that's what's so hard and heart-wrenching to me. He has less of a, of a circle of, of people that grew up with it, right? His, his side is more, I want them to experience what's lacking. I'm more like, you don't even know what we've had, you know, and you're walking and I can see every, everyone walking away from it and be like, oh, come back. So how do you deal with that? And I'm so curious, like now or along your journey, what has that been like? I mean, it must have been wild for your family members to be like, what is going on? You know, because oh, now yeah. all of a sudden you want to go to mass. Yeah. Well, yeah. there was a it was a good moment. I think sometimes it's 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 a true testimony. Uh, there was a bar fight that was about to happen and his brothers were ready. You know, his one brother was like, all right, we got this. And Bob's. I hey, called, I stopped the fight he and he looked fight, at me, he's like, Wait, what? Like, what? And I'd be the first one coming in with a haymaker what? to start dropping people. <laughs> that was a bouncer and, and all this stuff. So he's like, so he, he's like, what's going on? He knew something was different. going on. He's like, this is ain't the same person. Like he, yeah. I would have just came up because he, he called his wife fat and he did all this. It was like, this the guy, guy deserved, he was this gonna... guy, but he was drunk. And so, so I calmly, I calmed the situation down for once in my life okay. instead of like my nickname was choke slam. Like literally I would just come up and just like slamming people, you know, and like, like, like roadhouse, you know? So, Oh, so he's like, wait, what, wait, what's going on here? Like I was, it was real confusing to, to yeah. my, to my wow. brothers, especially. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, that was, it was different for them. I mean, luckily for us, we found, we did, now we do have a community that we plugged into or we have our new parish where she's the, she's the principal at, we were looking because we moved to Indiana. We'd already been moving, lived in Indiana across the border for a while. And it was like a 40 minute drive to go back to the parish. It was like COVID started. And we were like, our, our priest was trying to tell us to go to this parish that we're at now because they were we, doing, we wanted to do all the things that ours. We, we, we knew no one else was going to step up and do it. So like we, we, we found a place there. to plug right into and they were already having discipleship and we're blessed to be they're doing all the things they're doing all the things and so we were able to kind of plug in and and okay. so we we help lead uh like a small group of people who are on fire we have a group of like 20 25 of us who have kids and we meet in each other's houses twice a month where we kind of do the alpha thing where we have a meal together and then instead of a video somebody it's a connect and grow group. So then somebody gets a talk. We call it Catholic house party. Yeah, it's called Catholic house party. Oh, group I name. love that. That's so way more fun. That's a fun yeah. name. That's well, that's like we when said. people we say connect group three. Yeah, uh, we were like, we need to change ourselves. We can't be connect group three. Yeah. So we all voted eventually. We had different names, but we we eventually settled on Catholic, Catholic house, house party because we could invite people to that. Hey, or, oh, no, we yeah. can't come no, to your thing. No, that's I'm sorry. We got Catholic I'm so house sorry. Party we tonight. can't come. 
we have Catholic house party tonight. That's what we want to be able to <laughs> that's say. Our, to that's our branding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So then someone gives a talk. So a lot of people don't like to talk. So it's like trying to challenge people and it doesn't have to be their conversion story. It can be like, Hey, three things I learned about the Eucharist or three things about angels. You know, we just did that spiritual, spiritual uh, stuff that they've gone through or want to talk about. Yeah. We just and, had someone who talked about the corporal works of mercy yeah. and how to live them out and her, you know, like the things she's done in her life or things she's challenging what by that she finds challenging to live them out it was it's very good it's it's beautiful but then, but then it's small group but then the best part is is that our children are there so we're out of all the there's mm -hmm. there's four connect groups now none of them have kids they're all older so it's a challenge with kids and it makes it harder because you gotta find sitters and all these people got some people got you know they're catholic so they got four kids and three kids and two kids right you know, so it's a lot so we need two sitters sometimes and i didn't realize like how impactful it is because th they're kind of like with the babysitter doing their own thing but I was driving and screaming. Yeah. They're screaming and having fun and you know games and it's fun. But like I was driving my daughter and her friend home from volleyball practice and they were just talking. It's like, yeah, you know, we got Catholic house party tonight. It's like, <laughs> she's like, you know, like someone gives a talk and you know, like they, 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 they do praise and worship and then they, you know, they pray together. And it's just like, it was like a normal oh, conversation. So, so it's like, Oh, you know what we do. So that's, that's the thing that's about our cool. podcast that we, we, you know, we talk a lot about marriage and families, but you know, we always say more is caught than taught. It's like, they're not in the meeting with us, but they know what's going on. And to see, Hey, our mm -hmm. friends, do we get together? We talk about Jesus. Like it's normal. We have a meal. We share a meal together that we, we sing, uh, you know, someone picks a praise and worship song then we do silence. And then we pray with each other. We pray about. Yeah. And that it's also those we're these, the parents, you know, and then the, the kids, the, the same, you know what I mean? It's like are being brought up by like-minded yeah. you know it's 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 becoming that faith community and you have that you know that those parents are providing that same foundation that we're providing for our kids so i think that this is providing them with some strong catholic you know what a friend friendships strong, within their own yeah, to, to be normalizing life. a part of our podcast is normalizing catholicism it's like we yeah. don't have to be weird we're not weird right? we're not, we're not weird. That, that's like our catch you know tagline almost like we're not weird normalized catholicism it doesn't have to be <laughs> weird we have to be weird you know it's like we're you know we're in the world we don't have to be of the world but we could still like do normal things but mm -hmm. do it for god and like like yeah. this uh the next chp that we're hosting is going to be on friday the 13th that we're still going to give a talk um we're still going to you know have our our songs but we're going to have a fire we're going to have the the kids be more involved we're going to have music by the fire and roast marshmallows and have it be like more of a well, uh, Katie's giving like a the party. talk about how Halloween is actually I mean, a Catholic Halloween, a Catholic so I, I have a the, argument about Eve and stuff this so. is a Catholic holiday um yes so yeah so that's that's coming up on that's Friday so so good yeah, I love I love all of that. And it's so true. I, I think I think that's what Jesus wants, right? Like, I mean, you even look at how he called the disciples and how they walked in. They were in the world, but they weren't of the world, but they still approached people, mm -hmm. had relationships. They yeah. had people over for dinner. They went to each other's houses like yeah. they were normal, quote unquote, in the sense of reaching out to people that don't know that right. this is true. I mean, that's right. what the Lord wants for, mm -hmm. for all of us. He wants us to reach people in relatable ways and grow in faith in a way that's not, you know, hard to obtain, you know, that it's actually approachable and relatable and merciful and just normal in a sense where you can open up with someone and just talk about the things that are bothering you or what you feel called to. And I don't know what I've found in my own journey too. It's like when you meet people where they are, you can get so much further than if you're trying oh, yeah. to teach or preach or mm. correct, you know what I mean? But it's like when you just meet someone exactly where they are and be like, Hey, have you ever thought of it this way? Kind of thing. And, mm -hmm. and even saying truths, but like in a language that they understand, Yep. You know, not so, not so like you said, like, oh, let's open up the catechism and see, you know, how the church puts it, but just like finding ways that you can relatably share truth with people. I love to do now, you know, because it's like, it's such a passion for me to just open these little doors in their life of maybe they have never looked at something some way. Cause I know for me where I was though, that's what worked for me. 
is right. like when people met me where I was and didn't make me feel judged or different or like excluded, just know they actually loved. made me feel heard and seen and understood. Yeah. Yes. It made me want to be like, oh, maybe there's more to this, you know, Catholicism thing or religion thing mm -hmm. than I thought. And so I think that it sounds like that's what you guys are able to do through alpha and then the seeds you're planting in your in your children that are going to bear fruit because then I'm thinking your kid's friend is gonna remember what she said about Catholic yeah. house party and prayer yeah. you know yeah and like that even could plant a seed in her friend's life that could grow um to be like whoa yeah. I wonder what Catholic Catholicism is all about you know what yeah. I mean like they, they're having house parties I don't know uh -huh. yeah right it sounds fun yeah that, that, that was part of the branding uh right genius that uh, we came up with and yeah. I thought it was funny well because to be honest like you know we have a couple of drinks it's like it's fun we have well like yeah. right now right now we're having a drink and we're just relaxing as we're gonna go to bed soon and yeah. you know it's like okay it's like it's it's just adding love to everything it's like mm -hmm. caring enough about people and their souls to want to share it I think that's part of the that's what I didn't understand it becoming Catholic is that it's like we know where the, the eternal life set, we know like there's a desert and we have the oasis and, and the water bubbling up is eternal life. And it's Jesus. But let me get this right. You don't want to tell anybody about it. Like, but you just told me about this stupid show on Netflix or this restaurant that you had some, <laughs> you know, cheesy burger or something that you really can't wait to tell me about it. But you know, Lord and savior are going to save, save my life forever. Like no big deal. It's yeah. like, well, it's just, I didn't understand that politics. That's yeah. Why. I just didn't understand that it's coming to become you, a Catholic. I just yeah. I'm like how, it, because I, I started with an encounter yeah. and it's just, it's sad for it's me. Different. So that's a lot of what we tried to do not only on our, our podcast, but just in our relationships or whether that's her school of how she leads is trying to create, you know, whether that's with her staff. I mean, she's real humble. She don't like to talk about things, but with her staff, she does these make room events where she's with the, the teachers is like to make room for God. So we're going to get together. We're going to do something spiritual making room for God and each other and each other. So then they, they, they spend fellowship time, but it starts with God. It goes to mass or go to adoration like mass and then out to eat, or uh, we're going to do ax throwing this year. That was a Dang. that was a suggestion, axe yeah. throwing. But we're gonna do some kind of reflective meditations and things like that yeah. beforehand, like through the Halo app, probably or something. You know, anything where we're gonna get together and pray and then have something fun to like hang out with each other, making room for God and each other. That's the theme. But I think that I want to speak really quick. But when I taught freshman theology, that's exactly you know I was taking these really high you know. God had knowledge. It's like, none of this matters if there's no heart, you know, there's no heart knowledge there. And you're, you, you got this encounter to your heart. That heart knowledge came first for most people that had knowledge, especially if they learned it in school comes first. And so trying to make that connection, I think relevance is everything and young people, especially, but I think all people crave genuine and, you know, gen being genuine and being authentic and I think that that is so appealing in our day and age now that is so fake, especially with social media and so many things that are being thrown at, especially our young people, when they hear the truth, if it's packaged in love, when they hear the truth, it, it resonates. And I, I would, I would teach very difficult topics to my students, but packaged in love and in truth and inherent dignity and value and worth and when I came from that angle, there was, while well, while some students completely disagreed with everything that I taught, right? They never uh, were offended or argumentative or anything where they were coming, you know, at it like when uh, negatively they could say, oh, like now I understand why the church teaches that, even though I don't really agree because the world was telling them not to, right? But, but. Mm -hmm. Now I see, I, now I know why they do. And that's, I'm going to look at it different, you know? So I think that God is calling us now to not change one teaching, but to, to repackage these teachings and in how you said, like, and meet people where they're that where, where they are at in that accompaniment, but we have to lead them to the truth too. Are you feeling drawn to God and want to start a prayer life, but you're just not sure how to get started? I need to tell you about this app that I love called the Hallow app. 
It is a Catholic prayer and meditation app that has everything you need already laid out and pre-recorded for you. So all you need to do is press play and allow the Lord to speak to your heart. They will walk you through everything. Um, they have the daily gospels. They have guided silence with the Lord. They have the rosary, saint stories, prayers for Lent and Advent and all the different seasons of the church. Um, everything you need in one easy to use app, which I love, especially in this season of motherhood with a newborn. I've been using it for the daily gospel meditations, which I love every morning. And then uh, my daily rosary at night. They have all the mysteries. Everything's already there. So you don't need to think about what you need. You can just press play and allow the Lord to speak to your heart. Go to hallow.com slash grow good to get a three-month free trial of the whole premium product. It's amazing for three months. And if you decide to purchase at that point, you can get 20% off your purchase as well. If you go to hallow.com slash grow good, that's H-A-L-L-O-W, hallow.com slash grow good for three-month free trial and 20% off the Hello Premium Plus Edition. But we have to lead them to the truth too, you know? Right. And I think that you can't hit them over the head with it to start. Right. That's that's part of the problem, right. which right. especially with the young people, is that they want they want to be listened to, they want to be heard, mm -hmm. just like we do. Yeah. And our kids or whatever. But I think we have a misconception that when we listen to people that we're agreeing with them. Like, no, they just want space to let them talk it out. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, I was like, feel like we're plugging alpha, but like, cause I didn't know how to do this. Ask this is question. like, it's yeah. like letting them just ask questions. Like, oh, that's interesting. Okay, cool. Oh, I, oh, I see what you, you know, you know, and oh, okay. I, I appreciate what you said there. And yeah. you're just not agreeing with them, but just listening to them. And cause some people don't, they haven't formalized what they believe or why they believe it. Like mm -hmm. they haven't took the time. We're so distracted, whether that's social media or sports or whatever, where people haven't had these actual conversations like, well, why do I believe? Is it just because my mom told me to go to mass okay. or is it because yeah. whatever, you know, it's like, well, sometimes, yeah. you know, God doesn't have grandchildren, you know, he has children. So you have to figure that out for yourself. Mm -hmm. But my th thing, I just, I, I want people to feel the same thing that I felt. Like I want them right. to know it is real, but not only real, that it's life changing. Like he right. wants, he, you know, God, he, he wants us to have life to the full. He that doesn't want it. To normal is, you know, if we yeah. were, if, if, if God designed this world, God designed us, God designed each one of us with our unique gifts and talents. When we use them in the correct way and we live our lives the way we want them to, that should be the normal. That's the norm. Yeah. That's extraordinary, right. but it's the norm. It's not weird. What's yeah. weird is rejecting it and doing your own right. thing. And, and, you know, so I think we just need to flip that whole narrative on its head, right? Like being you is being who God made you to be, you know, but and being uh, that well, being, being, being the best, well whatever being, that could right. be, whatever, you know, and that's whatever the norm. career or that path. That should be the norm, right? It's extraordinary. Yeah, and you don't lose anything either because I think there is this misconception that like, oh, I have to give up things. But yeah. it's like in reality, God wants to fulfill everything in you, all your dreams, all your passions, all your desires. He, he's the one that created you and put right. them there. And so you're not losing anything. You have everything to gain. And I think yeah. it's just a flip of the way that you view religion because obviously the world paints this picture of what religion is and the culture and so even just encountering someone living their faith like in your journey the two of you it's like even just encountering someone living their faith you saw the difference that she couldn't even see in her and how she was living her life even living it well I was just living right it, and you, you know yeah. it's not yeah. very hard in this culture to to stand out and right? that's and that's but how it does stand out yeah. And that's how they and that's how they converted the world. It wasn't by apologetics. I mean, Christianity started by their witness of how they lived, the joy, right. the the love. And that's, you know, not to say like today's obviously the, the, the feast day St. Francis, the the quote that's you know attributed to him that's probably not that to preach the gospel, use words when necessary. It's like 
there's some truth to that, but you also mm-hmm. have, you have to do both. You have to live it. Right. But at the but once you meet them where they're at and you get their truth of like, hey, well, can I tell you about Jesus? And like, can I tell you like, hey, this is what I how I used to be. I was lost. Now I'm found. I was this, and now I'm this. Mm-hmm. Like I can't. I don't know. I can't. I have no way to explain it other no than God. No one can argue your story. And no one can either, argue you know? your story yeah. for sure. Your story and your his impact on your life. No one can argue that. You know, that's all you really can say is your true testimony and and be willing to be able to have, be equipped with that knowledge to, you know, lead people to the truth. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's your story that draws them. Yeah, it's it's it, your personal witness, but it's also through the, life and treat them. But it's also them. through like whatever, like, it doesn't have to be like in a classroom or a small, it, it could be any way that God's using you. Like, for example, now I started a men's group. We work out like we, we twice a month, we, mm-hmm. we, you know, we go to the park at 7 a.m. It's like the only time I could fit anything else in us busy dads. So we we meet at a park. We we pray together. Flip we, some tires. We, 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 we work out for 40 minutes. We go to confession, go to mass. I'm like, I love that. It, you know, and, but you can invite somebody like, hey, we're doing this workout in the park. Like, you know, it's like, oh, what's that? I'm like, oh, you know, it's like, you know, it's a men's group, whatever. It's called Ascent and, you know, whatever. And like, once they're there, it's like, okay, you know, everybody goes around. We have intentions that we pray for. If there's anything, we could pray for you. And, you know, we, we say a little prayer, but then like, hey, anybody wants to go to mass afterwards? It's not weird. All right, cool. If you don't want to, that's cool. We'll go get breakfast or whatever. But it's like, just working out. So it's like, I didn't, right. I just found the things that I like to do to overcomplicate like, it. Just be, I like right. to talk. I like to hang out and have be, dinner and be, drinks be like well. everybody else. And, but right. it's not, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Cause yeah, I think we do, we tend to overcomplicate things and I, I feel, I mean, I just feel like it's a movement of the Holy spirit to be like, well, let's just, let's just hang out. Like let's not mm-hmm. overcomplicate everything and like yeah. over meeting it, you know, like yeah. you were saying, like, typically it's like oh we got to have like eight meetings about this before we even have the first one <laughs> yeah. let's just go out and like uh, have do a drink thing. with someone and invite uh, them yeah. yeah and it right. doesn't uh, have to be this complicated thing like god just wants to love on on people through you and through mm-hmm. relationships but so before we, we're wrapping up here but um i want to give you guys a chance two things one were there other encounters or god moments any got big God winks or moments in your journey that you want to share before we, we were closing. And then two, how did your podcast start? How did your ministry begin? How did you feel called to do that? And maybe the, maybe that's two in one, maybe there is a God wink in there of how you started your ministry. Well, well, for me, I can start with the God wink thing. So, I mean, I feel like I'm plugging alpha, but it's just funny because guys, you, that's how, how he's helped like, teach me how to, to, to be a, a disciple. And that's so like, I went through the late leadership program and there was a girl in our class named Zara and I, we were doing it. And I'm like, it's working. I read all these books. I was so excited about it. So I was talking about alpha to her. And so we were emailing back. How many she, years ago was that? This oh. is like 12 years ago or something like that. So mm-hmm. I was just telling her about this program. And then she had said she was going to come and come see us in action, do it. And we never connected, but I, we stayed in touch a little bit didn't talk to her for like 10 years. Then we, I went to the alpha conference in Phoenix. I got invited to go with our current parish and I'm there. She's giving the Catholic in a, uh, the alpha talk in a Catholic context. Like she what? went on, she went on to, uh, uh, she's like, I've done 25 alphas. Like I brought like 200 people to Jesus. And like, I'm like, and she gave me like a huge, she's like, yeah. And that guy right there, it's like a huge conference hall. It's like this guy, Bobby, he's the one who told me about alpha and like, it's changed our parish. And like, we're on, I'm like, it's like, I didn't even think twice. I never thought about it ever yeah. again, but God sometimes like wow. will give you those swings or like, yes. Hey, to let you know that you, what you're doing is cool, you know, because a lot of times we don't get those don't reinforcements, get fruit, but that's, yeah, that's our whole true. thing is that we are planting seeds. God does yeah. the rest, but it's shame on us. If we don't seek an opportunity or be present to somebody or tell somebody about the reason for our joy of what it is. And because I saw some fruit, I'm like, I didn't invent this. I'm like, it's just like evangelization for dummies. I'm like, the videos are good, but it's more just come to this thing. It's, you know, it's, 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 
but you didn't, I did. I had no idea in a million years, like wow. this girl would have like, she quit her job. She was working like in the city, like in a, like a wow. hedge fund. She quit her job at the hedge fund to do this. And now she's running a, a, a helping run a parish in Aurora, Amazing. but she's doing like bilingual. She's doing old people young during the day at night. She's like, it's, it's the best thing ever. She <laughs> was like on fire. Like I'm the like, invitation, right? and it was just, wow. tell, it was just telling her about this thing, like best practice. I'm like, this is working. You should try it and whatever. And she turned like, yeah, I know she's giving the head, the keynote talk. It was like, it was, surreal so god does it's gonna wait. be amazing when we can see that in eternity right? and we can see the yeah. the yeses that we gave and what god did through that because we don't even we have no idea like we have no clue no every yeah. little tiny yes we give every shrug of an invite like he's bearing so much fruit through that and we can't even fathom i don't think what we're gonna see someday <laughs> I know, you know, especially like as an educator, you know, I've had, I've taught probably taught over a thousand students, you know, it was at one point at the high school that I taught at, I was the freshman teacher. So my seniors were my first class and I was like, Ooh, I know everybody in the school. And there were like 500 kids, you know, I've taught almost everybody unless they came in as a sophomore or junior, you know? And yeah, you never see your fruit and you never realize your impact And, you know, I think God wants it that way, keeping us humble, you know, but sometimes Mm. you can get discouraged in what you're doing and and not think it's working and want to give up. And I think that's where he gives you those God winks like that. You know, I did have one just recently. We went to a, we were at this dinner um, put on by the diocese and one of my former students was there. You know, I'm a principal at a different school now uh, at a grade school, but I taught at a high school and she was a senior. Yeah. She was a senior. She was representing the high school at this dinner. I gave her a big hug. She's one of my favorite students. She was a sweetheart, did a lot uh, for me in class and exceptional young lady. And uh, her mom came up to me later and said, you know, when you walked in the room to this dinner, my daughter, you know, nudged me and said, mom, that's why I'm still Catholic. Wow. Like, oh, oh, okay. Well, whoo. There's a lot of, oh, I started, like, I dry my eyes, you know, like, it's not about me. Oh, glory to God. You know, but yeah, it was like, oh yeah. Okay. Maybe I was an okay theology teacher. Maybe I did reach somebody. I mean, I like, re- reached her. Let's hope in five years, she stays that way in college. Right. But yeah. Hey, okay. <laughs> that was nice. And then that same senior class, I guess, or last year's, yeah, that same senior class, uh, again, I haven't taught there. This is my third year uh, going into principalship, so I haven't taught there for two years. Uh, They voted me best teacher. I haven't been their teacher. You know, I was their freshman teacher. They were seniors, and I haven't been there for two years. And I got a text from the principal, just so you know, the class of, you know, 2023 voted you best teacher. Uh, I was like, oh. I didn't think wow. they cared, you know? So it is, oh. it is a little God winks like, Hey, you make an impact, keep doing what you're doing. You know, you, you, again, I, I just always say, just use me how you want. I'm your instrument. I don't understand sometimes why he moved me to principal because I thought I was really doing a, You know, I was making it, like I said, with those, with those kids that in theology, but I, I can't question him anymore. It just, it just starts to, there's too many like you said, I think it's so important to reflect and look back and see where God worked in your life and moved you where yeah. he wanted you to go, where you not, not necessarily thought you were going. Right. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And the podcast just kind of started because <sighs> she, she was teaching theology and I'm into it. I'm like, COVID, COVID started. Of catechesis and evangelization uh, through Franciscan University. I have a few classes left to, to get that. But at that time, it was COVID. Everything was shut down. Uh, again, that same priest that kept asking us to do things, he actually gave us all this equipment. This. He's like, I'm no not way. Gonna... Yeah. Wow, we're like, priest, I don't like, know. What are we going to do with this? Yeah. yeah and, he's the best. Uh, he's, we we so, still are good friends with him basement forever because i'm like what are we gonna do with this um he thought maybe i could use it for school or you know wow and um i uh or, or bob came up with the idea it was again we were all in lockdown losing our minds right um and uh he's like you want to do a podcast where we talk about like this stuff because again we, we were already we having these conversations a circle of friends like we do now that are rooted in 
in this faith. And it really was just us that we could sit and have these conversations with that we're reading the same things. And I was going through all these classes through Franciscan. I just finished up a theology of the body course. I was like, well, you know, about JP two And like, like you just, we're, we're listening to Fulton Sheen podcasts and reading Fulton Sheen books and uh, Dr. Peter Kraft books. And, you know, it, there wasn't many people to have those conversations with except each other. We had these microphones. We're like, well, we might as well let's, let's do a podcast then, <laughs> you know, and it just came from there yeah. really so from the basement. Yeah. So yeah, this is our basement. And, but that's the, the way that we do our podcast is just having a conversation, inviting people in a lot yeah. of times, like, well, like we've usually like this last one we just did on Sunday, we didn't have a plan. We, we prayed about it. That's what we do. We don't have a script. We just have people come into the conversation and then we're like, Oh, our daughter is studying for angels. We're like, oh, let's do something on angels. So we got her to come down and she, she, she was on the podcast with like, us like, about the nine choirs of angels. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Got it. Yeah. So, so your teacher said I was on my parents' podcast. Yeah. Well, all our friends. Well, yeah, we just got a message yesterday. Someone from Sydney, Australia is like, your daughter, Avery was awesome. I showed yeah, her. And it's like, so, so it's like, it, it's so cool to, you know, it's. It's supposed to just be a conversation and we're pretending that our listener or listeners are at the table with us, you know, just having the conversations that we have that we geek out over things, honestly, you know, we geek out over, I guess. So for him, it's Wow. I never, you know, he's this new thing. And I'm over here going, why didn't they ever tell us this? Like yes. theology of the body, especially as a cradle Catholic. I'm like, why didn't my teenage self get to yes. these things? My goodness. I'm, I was like kind of angry actually, but, you know, looking at it through that lens of I'm more like I'm, ex I'm continually learning more and more and more about this rich, amazing, never ending onion peeling like, I feel like I'm never, the truth is like the things that just keep, you, it never stops. It never ends yeah. the countless things that you can learn. And so we just geek out over any topic. If we're, I don't know, like, well, we have a so, lot we, of like it, I feel like we have never ending things to talk about anyway. So it's like, but, which I one mean, do you want to do an episode we've done, on now? What, we've done <laughs> se 76 episodes. So, but we, we obviously we're the Catholic couple. So we do a lot of marriage stuff when we can and raising kids and yeah. You know, we're we obviously not guests, yes. you know, we had, we've had the Bishop on and a bunch of priests and now we're starting to do more like zoom style ones. We got a bunch mm -hmm. lined up, but it's usually a lot of liturgical stuff. So we're, I, we do the instant We're we're heavy on Instagram. So, That's you know, all him. So, well, she was a teacher. <laughs> I actually was a teacher for a year. I went to school for it. So I miss she misses the teaching part too. So if we can, we learn something, we want to share it with other people. So like on our reels and stuff, I'm always, if it's, you know, something, a feast or about, you know, a, a reel about the nine choirs of angels and talk about them and try to try to educate at the same time and try to inspire and try to share our journey in our life with other people. But, you know, that's the thing is like, you're reaching one student, but like social media and this opportunity to reach tons of people that you don't realize like, and I don't know. I mean, I get messages from people and stuff like that, but you have no idea what you're really doing. So it's like, it might let's just keep throwing as many seeds as possible. Yeah. You know, today yeah. I was meeting with a bunch of other people doing the same thing in podcasts and trying to collaborate and help people. And like mm -hmm. people's lives are being changed and there's a crisis of despair and we know the truth. We have the truth. Experience that despair. You were someone that yes. was in that rock bottom. I think that's, yeah. And, and there co COVID just ex exacerbated it. Mm -hmm. And I've lost two friends over this time. One drank himself to death and the other one, mm -hmm. basically same thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's like shame on me that I didn't try harder, which I did, but I, I just looking back, it's just like, but how many other people, especially men, they're silent sufferers. It's like, Oh no, everything's fine. Everything's good, you know, and, and so that's part of this. If we can just reach one person or two people or whatever it may be, and just, you know, trying to get that out there in a, in a, in a way where people are at, like meet people where they're at, well, they're on screens, unfortunately, but we keep ourselves yeah. <laughs> hedged with the, the, the ministry work that we do with small groups, because I, I do I'm passionate. So I'm like crazy. So I'm on my phone a lot. I get it. And I uh, don't want to be on my phone yeah. at all. 
but it's like I said, it's that's why he makes all the content on the Instagram and I'll go, I'll come down and I'll do the podcast. I'll, I make her I'll do, don't let her fool you. I make her do, uh, she does yeah. a weekly gospel gem every Sunday and I, I conjure her into doing and uh, like that's the thing, the video ones, mm, I like coming down here with my high greasy ponytail and you know, yeah. my feet up <laughs> and having the conversation. Nobody's like, you know, I can itch my nose and all the things, you know, but <laughs> Yes. He wants to go yeah. video, more video, and I know that's the way to go. So, so when we when we hang Amazing. up off of this, I got her sitting here already. Believe you me, I'm going to make her film something. So, okay. <laughs> no, that's amazing, and I just I love hearing your journey because yeah, it's like you think about all the seeds that you guys are throwing, and like we said, someday to see the fruit that God's gonna bear through all of it, it will be yeah. amazing, and we just keep right. praying like make something out of, I think it was Matt Frad that says all the time, make something out of my manure, you know, like just yeah, yeah. take right. my manure right. and make it fruitful in some yeah. way, you know, Excuse I pray me however that. you want to. And, and it can be discouraging when you don't see the fruit, but it's not about me. And, and it is, it is, you know, it's our way of, of, of staying humble and just, just asking him every day, how do you want to use me? I'm your instrument. Well, I, I heard something good too. I think the most discouraging is okay. our, fa our family. Right, so oh. go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say the last question that I love to ask everyone who comes on at the end is, can you share with us one scripture verse that is either speaking to you recently or that has played a foundational role in your journey and why? Well, mm -hmm. that's easy for me. Mine's always mm -hmm. Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good or called according to their purpose. It's just all this craziness. I can't look back of all these other things, but all those things work to get me to where I'm at today and God's ways. He still found me somehow. So even when it's things are going good or going bad, he uses it all the same. You know, it may not be his perfect will, but it's that's his so uh, hard. permissive will a lot. So but, hard. but yeah, it's hard. It's the hardest thing to live, but it's the most important verse to live if you actually believe it and can do it. But it's hard because bad things happen and suffering's mm -hmm. there and people are, you know, sinful and things happen. But even if those things, God can turn even those things into good. Mine is when Peter walked on water and he thinks when he takes his eyes off Jesus, that's like my life story. So it's, mm. you know, when I, but, you know, when, I, I look at those waves as the overwhelming things I have to do in the world and just things that can come feeling like it's overbearing, but that's because my eyes are off of him. Right. And all I have to do is say, help me, Lord, get me out of it. And uh, he pulls me right out. Another one recently is when I was, again, that same feeling of being overwhelmed by the things of this world and the to-do lists and the, and just feeling when you're feeling crushed is, uh, I was in adoration and and God said for me to read the beginning of Genesis and it was how he organized chaos, right? How he put it into order. And so my new prayer has been organize my chaos. I love that. that. Those two. So good. Yes. I've done that before, like a lot recently. It's just like, even just take over my schedule, you know, like just take my calendar, take my to-do list. Yeah organize it like tell me organize what my do chaos, you want me Lord. To do? and he will do it it's yeah amazing the things that fall together or like yeah. work out when mm -hmm. like you just could never have planned it that way and they just <laughs> mm -hmm. and right like all of a sudden the, the priorities are there and they're very yeah. clear get these things done and these are the things that matter and the rest right. kind of can fall away right um Again, you know or the people that like will all of a sudden cancel yeah. or whatever. And like, you have a thing, a time in your schedule to do the thing that you wanted to do. And yes. it's just crazy how, when you pray that prayer, he really does show up. It's, it's wild. Yep. Just lift me. Lord, help me organize my chaos. Those have been my two. Yes. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on and sharing your journey. I mean, gosh, God is like, I feel like it's just fireworks. Like God is just, and still working yeah. in such huge ways in both of your lives through all of your guesses. It's amazing and so exciting to hear and watch. And I can't wait to see just what's next for you guys and continue to tune in to the Catholic couple. So where can people go if they want to find you and your ministry and everything you guys are doing? You want short reels and, and uplifting um, 
different quotes memes and, and stuff, and quotes, and uh, that's definitely Instagram. The so, Catholic couple uh, won. The the Catholic couple won. The Catholic couple was taken. But, and they yeah, don't, but our, they don't well, our podcast anything. was they out for a while before West. we did it. Uh, and then the Catholic couple podcast you can find on uh, everything. Spotify. Spotify Apple. Yeah. Apple. And we do have a YouTube channel, the, the Catholic couple, which we're going to start posting a lot more. Mm -hmm. so we're doing a lot of these, so it will be video. Yeah. Uh, much so. to her chagrin. Mm -hmm. Great. I got to do my <laughs> hair more. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you guys so much. And you yeah, know, thanks for I, having I, us. Of course. Yeah. I pray that this conversation reaches whoever it's meant to reach and that it's fruitful for them yeah. in some way. And we'd love to have you on and hear your story. I'm, I'm yeah. anxious. For I would story. love to. That'd be so yeah. fun. I'll yeah. bring a, I'll bring my glass of wine. It sounds like. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's, sure. that's exactly it. That would be great. Well, yeah. thank you guys so much and have a good rest of your night. You, you too. too. Thanks. God bless.